the West had planned to carve up what is modern-day Turkey during World War I. The Russians were to gain control of Istanbul, the Italians and French getting much of southwestern Turkey, the Greeks would gain more territory just west of Istanbul, and also take some key areas along the Turkish Mediterranean coast, especially Izmir, the former Greek colony of Smyrna. The Ottomans were desperate at the end of World War I. Over 325,000 were dead and 400,000 wounded. Its forces were being pulled back on all fronts. For centuries, different ethnicities worked together in the Ottoman Empire. As Russia made initial advancements in the east, some Turks feared the Armenians, who were also Greek Orthodox, might side with the Russians. The Armenians were pictured in yellow. The government tried to force them out of eastern Anatolia and allowed local Turks and Kurds to loot and kill them to force them to flee. Armenians and many Westerners called this ethnic genocide. It is believed that over one million Armenians perished. Armenians in Russian-occupied territory would proclaim their own country in 1918. The Ottoman government collapsed after the armistice. Many Greeks wanted to reclaim their former Byzantium or Istanbul now that Russia had been out of the war. The Greek Prime Minister Venizelos landed troops in Izmir, which had a majority Greek population. This was Greece in 1839. They wanted now to expand into Istanbul and also take key former colonies, especially Smyrna in the area yellow in western Turkey. The fear was that the Greeks would not stop, and this prompted the rise of Turkish nationalism. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, known as the father of the Turks, won fame due to the victory at Gallipoli in 1917. He had victories against the Russians who were declining before the revolution. Kemal won allegiance from Turks rejecting the harsh peace treaty. Parliamentary elections created a new government led by these nationalists. The British and French quickly occupied Istanbul and forced this new government to dissolve. Kemal set up a government in exile in central Anatolia in the city of Ankara, which would be today's capital. It was surrounded by mountains and set up a new Grand Assembly in April of 1920. Under the terms of the armistice, the Sultan had to sign the Treaty of Sev. The Straits would be permanently managed by France and Great Britain, thus they would control Istanbul. Istanbul would be independent if the Commission felt it infringed on minorities. Eastern Anatolia would be divided to an independent Kurdistan and an enlarged Armenia. So this area in yellow would be a larger Armenia. They would become independent. And this area in the brown would be a homeland for the Kurds. Greece would also have Smyrna and Thrace. France and Italy would gain territory in southwest Anatolia. The Arab lands would be given to the French and British's mandates and foreigners would be tried under their own laws rather than under the Ottoman laws. This would be known as the foreign capitulations or extraterritoriality. This is the area of the Arab lands. The French would get a mandate for what is today's Syria and Lebanon, plus gain an area in the blue, dark blue, in Anatolia. The British would gain control of Iraq as well as the Holy Lands and today's Jordan. This is the map that was created after World War I. The Greeks did not just take Izmir but kept occupying land to the west. The Soviets who were fighting a civil war against western backed non-communist forces gave Kemal the money and weapons to wage war against the West. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Both countries occupied Armenia and that front became silent. The Greeks came close to Ankara but were defeated by the Turks. The Allies were still tired from World War I and Italy and France renounced their claim to southwest Turkey. In 1922 the Turks drive out the Greeks from all of Turkey including Izmir. The British realized that they would have to fight to keep Istanbul 
and decide to call for a new treaty. The Sultan flees Istanbul, and the Assembly votes to abolish the monarchy. On the 29th of October 1923, Turkey becomes the first republic in the modern Middle East. A new treaty, the Treaty of Luzon, would disband foreign capitulations and initially allowed the Straits to be demilitarized. They also did not gain Mosul, which went to the British in Iraq. Ataturk started domestic reforms to modernize his country. Ataturk drank and also was a womanizer, so not very religious in a heavily Islamic state. Thus, his major quest was to modernize Turkey by turning it into a secular, pro-Western state. He became an autocratic leader or father figure before becoming fully democratic. In 1924, he abolished the caliphate. He also closed the madrasas or religious schools. He scrapped Sharia law with a modified Swiss civil code and had more rights for women. For attire, women did not have to wear a veil. Men were forbidden to wear the fez, only Western attire. The day of rest was switched to Sundays instead of the Muslim holy day of Friday. He also adopted a metric system and the Gregorian calendar. The Turkish language adopted the Roman alphabet and replaced the Arabic language. This was easier since only 10% of the Turks were literate, so it was easier for them to begin to learn the new Roman alphabet and Turkish language in schools. Ataturk also followed Stalin's five-year plan to industrialize. The state would control key industries. Also, state schools were developed for agriculture to teach westernized modernization. The capital was moved to Ankara. It was more Turkish than Istanbul had been. Ataturk dies in 1938, and the country adopted a two-party political system. However, the army kept with Ataturk's value system and would intervene if the country elected someone too Islamic or a threat to Ataturk's vision.